bicycle. The scariest thing about dehydration is that we can become dehydrated to a dangerous level before we even realize it. On Ash Wednesday, we talked about how it seems as though the world is drying up. And if, and if we're not careful, if we are not sustained by the recognition of our own need for God's love, we can be in trouble and not realize it. We can go blindly through our days and inadvertently distance ourselves from God. At first glance, we can fool ourselves into thinking we're good. But are we? Today, we're going to reflect, we're going to reflect on how going into the deep can bring us into focus about who we are and what it means to be who we are. Deep reflection. Let's pray. God, as we enter into this period of self-examination and yet also being in service to others, help us, help us to recognize that it is not by our doing, either of a receiving of your spirit or, or sharing your spirit to the world. It is you. Help us to be vessels of that good gift and hear your words today and let them strengthen the walls of these vessels that we may continue to be and see ourselves as part of your light. Guide us, direct us, correct us as we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, what does into the deep mean to any of you? Any, any thoughts about that? I know for me there was a movie years ago, Into the Deep, that was really scary. So every time I think and we start this music, it reminds me a little bit of that movie. But is there anything else that, what about in your lives? What does it mean to go into the deep? Any thoughts? Depression? That's often the case, yes. I heard something else. The unknown, yeah. Yeah, the, these, that we can be into these places. It can be scary. It can be that scary place. It can be that unknown place. And yet we aren't sure how we fit into the picture. If you, if you walk along a lake uh, or a stream and look into the water, you may see a reflection of yourself. And based on a lifetime of looking in the mirror, you could say that was you. But other factors are in place in that water. Sometimes it's going to be murky water. Maybe uh, and you can just kind of make out your, what your, the different parts of your face or your person. Or, or maybe the land underneath, you know, underneath the water where the rocks and the silt and the mud is, is kind of part of the picture as well. Or ripples or even waves from the wind or storm, all make a difference of how that reflection is portrayed. The same way when we reflect on who we are, we have our way of seeing ourselves versus what God sees. We have a way of condemning ourselves and remembering the things of the past and, and making a determination of who we are based on the things in the reflection when we reflect on our own lives. But we have a way of seeing ourselves versus the way God sees us. And that's where the good news is. We see the surface. Our view of who we are is distorted. Amen? You're not sure. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> we can be distorted by the things that have happened in our lives, the things that are surrounding us, our health, all sorts of things. But what God sees is much more. God's true picture of us includes three elements at least. First, we are created by God. 
We hear in Genesis 1 verse 26, Then God said, Let us make humankind in our own image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. We were created by God for special purpose. And we always remember when God created the world, he said it is good. But when he created humankind, he said it is very good. It's unfortunate that we forget that we are made in the image of God. We are perfect in God's eyes just the way we are. But a conflicting image deluges our everyday lives and minds with print media, social media, and over and over the airwaves and movies that are produced. What we come to believe is that what's important is special things like how much money we have, what body type do we have. For instance, the perfect man is six feet and 187 pounds. I'm close But here's where I tend to fall apart. The results of the perfect hair color is brown, 42%. 22.5% believe blonde is. 21% believe black. And 11%, let's hear it for the redheads, let's hear it. But gray didn't even make the study. (laughs) So when we age, are we less than? That's what the world would tend to make us believe, but what we were created by God. Brene Brown says this, every single day, our feelings and experiences show up in our bodies. They are shaped by where we come from and, and how we were raised. They drive how we show up, and each feeling has its own unique backstory. Understanding these emotions and these experiences in our, is our life's work. The more we learn, the deeper we can continue to explore. The psalmist says it in 139.14, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Do you stand in the mirror in the morning and go, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Wait, wait, fix that. Now I am. No, we don't. We, didn't, we missed the point that the psalmist is making. He, he goes on to say, wonderful are your works. What you've made in me, God, is beautiful. It is amazing. It is wonderful. And I praise you for that. I, I love it when I hear the phrase some attribute to Ethel Walters. I am somebody because God don't make no junk. That is a real, unencumbered by society view of who we are. Amen? God don't make no junk. That's who we are. The world would be a a much happier place if we could say, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. As we walk down the street, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, not worrying about what somebody else sees or thinks they see or what television says I am. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you were fearfully and wonderfully made? Anybody? With well, the people that do, say this with me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Ready? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Imagine what the world would be like if we all felt that way all day long, going through our lives and going through even our troubles, saying, I fearful, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. We all probably need to write that on our mirrors because that is the gospel truth. That is the good news. From the beginning, God made us to be fearfully and wonderfully made. And at our deepest truth, when we seek the deepest truth, that's what matters, no matter what the world says. Amen? Second, we're sinners saved by grace. Paul says in 1 Timothy, to the, oops, my passage isn't there. There it is. Thank you. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance 
that Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. Two things to remember. In Christ, our sins are washed clean. You remember, if, when you go back here, you can go and get your hands all in the sand in this wonderful display that Susie has made in our three interactive places where you can go deeper. And, and in that, you can, you can get in the sand, get your hands all dirty, and then put them into the water and be washed clean, recognizing that's what God does with us. By the way, we do change the water between services. So don't worry. But we are washed clean. We don't live under the burden of sin. We live under the grace of God. But it's also important to remember that we are sinners saved by grace. That does not mean that we are better than anyone else. We don't judge others. That's where religion has gone terribly wrong. We are sinners, but we, like Paul, have been saved by grace. To operate in any other means towards that is forgetting that in Christ we are made free from sins. Not in us we are made free from sins. Not from what we've done. There's nothing we can do. But in Christ we are made free from our sins. And that puts the burden back on us. As Matthew 7, 1 says, do not judge so that you may not be judged. If we judge, the burden is ours all over again. Amen? Because we're just saying we don't believe what we just said. But in Christ, we are made clean. Third, we are created to glorify God. Isaiah 43, 7 says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is made possible when we look deeper beyond the reflection we see of ourselves and see what God sees. To see that God has created us special. Charles Spurgeon said this once, You will never glory in God till first of all God has killed your glorifying in yourself. And I would add to that, and killed the condemning of yourself. That's not our job. When we go into the deep, the truth of our baptism in Christ, we we see what God created. We see that when we fail, God repaints the picture of wholeness through Christ. And we see that we were created for God's purpose. From James 1, verses 23 through 25. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. Listen, glorifying God comes in claiming our faith. And when we look into the mirror and recognize that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and then walk away and go on as if nothing changed, as if God didn't have an impact, as if Christ didn't wash us clean, nothing's going to change. If nothing changes, nothing changes. This doesn't require placards along the roadside. It is when the Spirit gives us the nudge of opportunity to share or to serve. We will usually know it is a Spirit because our first reaction is to avoid it. One of our folks here years ago used to say that they would feel the presence of God saying, just go to that person, and they wouldn't understand why. It's not ours to understand why. It's to understand, to respond to that. And if if we don't want to, it's probably a good chance it's the Spirit of God telling us to. We also glorify God in praise and worship here. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, that was good. We were praising and worshiping. And what we do here is we let our guard down uh, and our praise is up. I want you to do this second service thing. I want you to go hallelujah and raise your hands. 
Hallelujah. All right. All right. Now, see, we, we let our guard down for just a moment and we raised our praise to God. That is how we glorify God. We don't glorify God by the number of attendances per month or any other reason. We glorify God by saying, how wonderful, hallelujah. Thank you for being God for us. Thank you for sending your son for us. Thank you for making a difference in our lives. That's what we do. And, and by letting our guard down, it, it, it takes away the habit and routine of just showing up in church. It lets us recognize the presence of God. Is God in this place? Yes. And finally, glorifying God, as Billy Graham once said, we glorify God in everything we do. Everything we do should glorify God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, on the surface, that seems impossible, doesn't it? If we just look at this quick reflection of what that is. Proverbs twenty-seven nineteen says, Just as the water reflects the face, so one human heart reflects another. Just live in the glory of God. Just live as sinners saved by grace. Just live as the very good creation God created us to be. When we go deep into the deep of God's grace, we find our true reflection. Not dimly lit, but shining for the world to see. As 2 Corinthians says in chapter 3, And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord, as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image, from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. This is what God calls of us. This is where God has called us to be, and who God has called us to be. So we have to see our reflection in a new light. In the light of Christ. And we praise God for what God has done in our lives. We glorify God by living that out in all that we do. So go. As the scripture says, our faces are reflecting Christ. Go with that amazing gift and go deep. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.